In June of 1783, a large group of fissures opened in southern Iceland. Large volumes of lava soon poured outwards at a rate exceeding 4,000 cubic meters per second, quickly flooding a large swath of landscape and a thick layer of molten rock. The fissures soon propagated further, creating a 27-kilometer-long fissure system which was all erupting at the same time. This mini flood basalt-like eruption was the largest diffusive eruption to occur on the planet in the last 1,000 years, sending flows of basaltic lava up to 70 kilometers distant. Other large volume eruptions have also occurred during the same time span and almost universally involved basaltic lava. The reason for this is that the more silica a lava flow has, the more viscous it becomes. Thus, silica-rich lava flows longer than 10 kilometers, such as andesite or rhyolite, are highly unusual and quite rare. Take, for example, the Kanaga volcano in the Aleutian island chain. Its lengthy and acidic lobes of lava travel between 2.44 and 2.65 kilometers from its summit. If this volcano instead erupted basalt, lava flows could have traveled four times as far. Yet, in the Cascade mountain range there exists a particular set of two lava flows which seemingly broke this rule. There, from a peak in the Goat Rocks Wilderness, a 74 and 52 kilometer long andesite to borderline dacite lava flow advanced across the landscape in what was the planet's longest known silica-rich molten flow of material. These two lava flows are known as the Tiatan andesite flows and stretch from Goat Rocks all the way to the edge of Yakima. The edge of the longer and older andesite flow is most pronounced near Kawich Creek, where the more than 100 foot thick lava flow was cut by a river forming beautiful outcrops of volcanic rock. The two massive lava flows were at one time thought to have originated from Mount Rainier by early geologists. Instead, they originated from a completely separate volcano known as Goat Rocks. While this extinct volcano is still quite tall as it stands at 8,182 feet in height, it used to be far higher. At its maximum height, this volcano was taller than Mount Baker as it stood at 12,000 feet in height. It began erupting 3.2 million years ago when the volcano produced a series of highly explosive eruptions that deposited large volumes of rhyolite over a vast area. Eventually, lava became less silica-rich and eruptive activity switched to producing basalt. Over the next one and a half million years, lavas became increasingly andesitic and a tall stratovolcano was constructed out of gray lava flows. Near the end of this period, a particular flank vent near the modern site of Bear Creek Mountain became particularly active and for an unknown reason began producing unusually voluminous flows of lava. Clearly, a large magma chamber was at work underneath the complex, and eruptions at this particular event had an unusually low gas and volatile content in magma. In other words, eruptions at this vent were unusually non-explosive. Instead of viscous lava fragmenting into ash during an eruption, it instead produced voluminous lava flows. The first Titan and the site flow erupted 1.64 million years ago. It started with a rapid growth of a lava dome. As andesite lava poured out of the vent at a rate of 800 cubic meters per second, it only took an hour to overflow a volcanic crater. The several dozen meter tall blocky andesite lava lobe then began rapidly flowing towards the northeast at a speed of several kilometers per hour. However, as days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, the eruptive rate waned. The andesite eventually reached the Tiatan River. As it represented a low point and had a downward slope, the mass of molten rock continued downslope while filling much of the river canyon. This process continued for several years until the andesite turned south at the Natchez River. After 12 years of continuous effusive activity, the eruption finally stopped. Over the next several hundred thousand years, glacial and water erosion almost completely removed any trace that this andesite flow ever existed, once again opening up the Tiatan River. Then, 1.39 million years ago, a similar eruption occurred from the same source vent. Over the span of several years, a similarly voluminous lava flow traveled along a similar path, although since the river had a different orientation at the time, there were some minor variations. It stopped flowing after having traveled a stunning 32 miles. Today, large sections of these massive andesite lava flows have beautiful polygon columns which can be seen while driving on US Route 12. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Ami Z for supporting this channel.